talking about working out in the Billy Blanks Tybo studio that used to be across the street. What are you using, the Solo Flex? I'm glad you're bringing these all up. Rich still has his Hulk Hogan workout, that that little workout that, that you have hand with the hand grips, grips and the five pound weights and my Hulkamania headband. Of course I do. Rich has that. So I ask everyone in the room and everyone listening at 877-99 on Fox, as everyone does try to get in better shape for the summer. I'm stereotyping and generalizing, but you go to the gym now and there is an influx of like, well, I guess it's time to work my fat ass out and get a little better shape going. The gym is pretty packed the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Well, it's that time of year for sure. In your life, high school, college, 20s, 30s, have you ever fallen into the ab roller? Yeah, of a course. A trend, meaning I did Orange Theory for like six months. My wife did a Bunda class, like a butt class. Uh, you and I, Kavino, actually did, what is it? It's not, is it Soul Cycle? We did Soul Cycle, but for an event, for a sponsorship. Oh, what was that other one you called? You and I did personally like a, a different sp- Like one. spinning, whatever. Yeah, but it was a spin what class. What the hell was it spin called? Class. I don't know. It was a local LA one. I don't know. Beat Bike. Beat bike. Beat bike. Wow. So, have you guys yeah. ever? Have you guys ever? Beat got, bike by Dre. Beat bike. Yeah. Beat bike <laughs> by Dre. Yeah, it was cool. He caught. The, he taught the whole class. Did you ever get suckered into any infomercial item, Danny G? Did you have like the Bowflex in your garage or anything like that? Body by Jake. Ab scissors. <laughs> oh, ab scissors. Still in the garage, and also I have the ab roller, yeah. which actually worked back in the day. No, the ab roller did work. I have, a, I have an embarrassing story about uh, my co-host Steve Cavino here. That spot. You could back me up, oh, and this. to God. I know where you're going. And I so love this. we in radio and television, and now, you know, influencers killed the radio star, let's be honest. We used to get all the freebies. We would get random workout stuff sent to the studio. Danny, you know the old school radio game, like promo videos, and you'd get DVDs. You'd get smut delivered to the radio station. You would just get Oh, everything. hell, I had LASIK eye surgery. Danny's on, the guy. On the house. Danny's the guy that got free LASIK because uh, he did the live reads. I had that Suzanne Summers one. <laughs> remember that? You went, remember Is that you? why you have buns of steel? That's correct. Uh, oh wow! I the knew th- it. No, the thigh master. I always said Ramos. He must work out. The Ramos thigh can, master. Uh, yeah. well, they, First, the watermelon with, with his thighs. When they, uh, when you know the famous lyric. He also handsome, had the shaker too. The shake weight. Oh, the yeah, shake weight. The shake Well, Ramos is the handsome man with athletic thighs, right? Yes. That, uh, yes. Yes. So. We're in Las Vegas, which, by the way, I hope we're in Las Vegas together as a show in a few weeks, something possibly in the works. And congratulations to the Knights. The Knights, by the way. Vegas. Las Vegas. Still celebrating. Congratulations on your first Stanley Cup victory. I know there was a reverse protest, but Vegas is geared up for the A's. I'm telling you, between the hype of the Golden Knights, the Raiders finding a new home, Vegas is a sports city now, man. But... I digress. We're in Vegas just hanging. A work event or something back in the day. We're walking through the casino. And I, he's laughing because he knows what I'm about to say. We're walking through the casino, and I see Cavino grab his abdomen. Like, Ugh. I'm like, oh, you got a uh, stomachache, man? Did, did uh, you, is, the cough, is the morning coffee hitting you? We'll find the restroom. Do you have a stomachache? I'm like, what is going on? Cavino was walking through the casino. With one of those ab belts that shocks you, like, <laughs> and Cavino would lay. I'd be like, "What are you doing?" I would call Cavino. He's like, "I'm just laying around watching the Yankees Yankees game." I'm like, "What are you What are you doing?" He Get goes, "My workout, man. Oh, I'm laying watching Yankee games, but I have my ab shocker on." Well, I I invented something called ab, uh, bed sit ups because <laughs> you know I realized that uh, regular sit ups were tough on my back on my lower spine. See, so we just lay in bed. I just lay do them in bed with the ab belt on every once in a while. So, uh, talk about the laziest workout of all time. Just picture Steve Cavino <laughs> walking through the casino in Vegas. We're all like, yo, what's wrong with this guy? He's like, Ugh. It's like, dude, lift up your shirt. Guy had, and by the way, to apply the ab belt, you, you know what you have to do, just so people, if people don't know this ridiculous. You have to lube up your belly. You have to lube up your belly like you're about to have. That was you, my favorite part. Danny, you know like when your wife gets the sonogram and the uh, 3D yeah, ultrasounds yeah. and all that? They put How, the goop on the belly. Well, yeah, guys have a soccer player. So, he the ab belt came with a jar of lube because you can't just have it shock your dry skin. So you have to put essentially like jelly all over your gut, then wrap this belt around you. So to think that Cavino did that and said, yeah, that's the right idea. I'm going to do this and walk around the casino. You know what, Rich? All of these little <laughs> apparatus, it's all generational, <laughs> right? Like we grew up in the time of the gazelle and Chuck Norris and everything else. 
I remember my dad, and my dad would be rocking his tidy whities way back on a Wednesday. And like, look how strong. My dad was built like a, I don't know, like Ron Guidry in the 70s. Like just a skinny, like 70s guy with really no muscle tone. He'd be working out on something called the bull worker. I don't know if anyone remembers what it is, but you just push bull in worker. and pull out. It's a bulwark. And I used to think, man, my dad's so strong. And he was like a string bean, this guy. Yeah. Because that was the physique back my, then. My dad had like 10 and 20 pound dumbbells under his bed, and that was the extent yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. That's the Pee Wee Herman workout. Right, yeah. Just your little dumbbells. Well, if you want to go old school, I could promise you at least one other person besides me has a grandparent who used to have that thing. It was like a belt. That it was like a machine. It looked like a, not a treadmill, but it was like a belt that ran around your waist and like, uh, blah, 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 yes. blah, 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 like it shook you. And what did that? Do? My like, grandmother had one of those in her garage. Yeah, and it became a coat rack, <laughs> obviously. But wow. at one point, our pa- our grandmother was in cartoons. That's it about jiggled it. your core. Yeah, I saw that on Three Stooges and cartoons. Dan Byer, you ever see the core jiggler? Did anyone in your family ever have that? It was I like mean, a- he's using one right now. Look at <laughs> it. Doing hey, it. that's too early to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just, just the the one on the belt, you know, um, or the one on the treadmill. Excuse me, yeah, that had the belt, yeah. That the, yeah. everyone's grandparents, but it was like nineteen sixty, yeah, nineteen sixty five version. But how did they all have it? Was it like did someone endorse it? Where they're like, oh man, uh, Jackie Probably Gleason said it was great. <laughs> door to door salesman or something. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, you want to stay in shape? Get one of these bad boys. And to tie it back to sports, I mean, look, staying fit is a part of the game, but. You could see, based on the workout routines, like you said, Rich, your dad, all he had was like two dumbbells. My dad had a stupid bull worker. You know, you could see in the physique of the athletes we admired growing up. I mean, nothing like the athletes of today. Like, think of Ozzy Smith. Think of these, like, slender, skinny superstars. Like, like a Gary Templeton was right. just a skinny dude. A uh, skinny dude staring it up. Uh, Keith Hernandez was just, like, a thin guy. Lack of muscle tone back in the day because they, the, they didn't have what we have today. Who's the they didn't first have the techno gyms? Who's the first? I guess you would say ripped in shape athlete. You remember like Dave Winfield, maybe Kevin Mitchell. Like who was the guy that was like, "Yo, this guy's going to the gym." Probably Jose Canseco. Oh yeah, Jose Canseco was yeah. De- yeah, the, yeah. the gym, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> mixed with some other stuff. But yeah. Before well, we that? also grew up in a time, our generation, like I said, is very generational. We grew up in the time of if you were staying up late, you were seeing all these infomercials. And it's probably because you were like buzzing and boozing and you were like, I got to get motivated. So you bought one of these stupid things because you saw it every night. One of these workout plans or one of these, like I said, apparatus. And you tried to use it and implement it into your life. Well, to tie it into sports completely, I'll ask you one random question and we'll move on. Who, by the way, needed a workout, if you ask me. Move on. When you think of all these old school gym, like you said, apparati, is there any, first of all, is there anyone that you want to hit us up and tell us that you bought that you're embarrassed of? 877-99 on Fox. I had one I sold on OfferUp recently because I never used it, but it was a really solid piece of equipment. It was like the Gorilla Bar or something oh, like yeah. that. What was it it's called? It's like a bow. Like gorilla, gorilla Bow. bow. Yeah. No, it was a Gorilla Bow. Yeah, yeah that's what it was. And it was uh, resistance bands. But it looks like a, it looks like a bow and arrow, like a bow. Right. Yeah. But I, but you know what? I had it under my bed. It was a really solid piece of equipment. It worked. I just never used it. I don't, so I, don't know I, if I sold it. I don't know if I ever told you guys because I, out of pure like self embarrassment. During COVID, I bought a set of like resistance bands, and I put it on a door frame. <laughs> to do like I guess you would say the equivalent of like the pec deck like you know like uh what would you call that like butterflies right yeah it snapped off the door frame and hit me in the back of the head oh, and I thought I had a concussion <laughs> I fell to the floor <laughs> I fell to the floor and I was like oh! uh, my wife's like are you okay sweetheart I'm like I don't know well, I'm seeing Bernie the heat's mascot yo dude and, I, I I almost knocked myself out with resistance bands and uh how could you forget after that you fell into the same trap as everybody else. Not that it doesn't work, because people who love it swear by it, but you did buy the Peloton, which turned into a, a laundry rack for you. Yeah. Oh, that's why I keep ja- my, uh, jackets and hoodies just get thrown over the Peloton in the guest bedroom. So, hey, uh, from the ab shaker your grandparents had, the little belt, blah, 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 to your the Peloton. Tony Horton P90X, that was a big race, oh, too, I told for you, because every woman loves to obsess over like wanting to make sure their butt looks good. My wife just bought like months. She's been going for a couple months. It's called Boonda, which is butt. And 
all they do. It's sort of like a CrossFit orange theory where they just focus on, come on, ladies, move, work that butt and squats and ass work. So You know what? It's all a bunch of fads. I'm not saying these things don't work because they do, yeah. but I'm sure Spot would attest. Spot has a personal trainer because he's making that daddy stacks kind of money. And I'm sure you would attest that it's just hard and, work and, has and dedication. No, uh, and, and has no uh, succubus is known as kids. Yeah, that, exactly. That, that take all the money. Yeah. But no, no, hard, I'm sure yeah, it's your just trainer probably says hard work and diet. Hard work and diet. You're right. There's, you don't need a, it's a gazelle. It's really just focus. Yeah. Well, you know and what? Consistency. So two-part question. Did I'm you ever buy- Clear gel I see you using uh, every afternoon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Spots, uh, spots on the HGH. He's just not telling us. I'm using an ab belt right now. So- mm. Uh, you get the, uh, you know, if you want to chime in with one of the products you bought, but is there something to be said about the stronger and bigger the athlete, the more injury prone? I know this is a narrative people have talked about, but it baffles me how a dad bod looking dude in the 70s or 80s was never hurt, but a god looking dude like Syndergaard has had multiple arm surgeries. Like, we're talking about. NFL players who looked like, you know, like just your rough uncle never got hurt, but the guy that looks like a specimen is always pulling up limp. Oh, my hammy, my quad. This uh, Is there, I mean, there's got to be research that shows when you're that strong and that defined and that. Absolutely. You're more prone to injury. There's no question. You're like John, stronger. Like John Carlos Stanton is a beast among boys. And that guy's on the IL like three times a year. How do you explain it other than, yo, you're just too strong? and your muscles are tighter, they're attributing a lot of Lonzo Ball's injury because of his weight training. Well, he yeah, he put on some muscle and weight. And, and it, 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 yeah. it alters how your fast twitch muscles work and how your body moves. So he's trying to move one way, but his muscles won't allow it to move that way. And then you create this resistance, and bam, injury. I, I, I know this is a little talking out of my butt like Ace Ventura. <laughs> yeah, but you're good at that. <laughs> Can I ask you a few questions? Um, it might sound like I'm talking to my butt. I'm no fitness guru, but I will say the times in my life where I've pushed it the hardest at the gym, where I was probably in my best shape, I was always a little banged up. <laughs> you know what I feel the best? Usually when I take like a week off or so because I'm on vacation or traveling for work or something, I really do feel like you look better, you may feel better, but aches and pains and i could see why some of these elite athletes you don't have to push that hard you need to stretch like uh, ichiro suzuki stay yeah. limber you know but, but how would you kavino how would you explain a guy like noah Syndergaard or a guy like john carlos stanton or people that if they played in the 80s they would have looked like gods ramos you, I mean, well no i'm just saying yeah. I, I, hank aaron obviously i i'm gonna go out on a limb and say i don't think hank aaron was doing any like you know muscle Bicep. Yeah, Hank Aaron was not doing uh, chest three days a week. No. He wasn't, you know, he Guy wasn't lifting. 755 home runs, and he was, you know, just a normal average. Like he was saying, he wasn't played a, a long big, time too. Played a long time. Never, I don't think he was ever injured. And guy, it was all in his wrist, man. It was all just a quick bat, and it had nothing to do with him being buff. I'm not saying that Aaron Judge, he's just a, just a tall guy specimen. That's just the way he is. But you're right. All of this because. In the softball team that I'm coaching, they're starting to do kind of workouts now, yeah. like going to the weight room. And of course, I don't know. Sometimes you think like, do they need all that stuff? No. I don't know. Well, it depends what sport we're talking about. Yeah. Especially like football. Baseball. I guess you do, right? Football. You need to put on some weight depending on what positions you're playing. Right? You need that extra muscle, but that's the evolution of the athlete. And as a result, it's a give and take for everything we've gained with these huh? monsters. We've lost in in health and injury. Everyone's bigger and stronger, but yeah. uh, more injury prone. Let me bring up two people. To sort of put a little bow on this You'll conversation. You'll never see a Cal Ripken again. Not even because of how the game works, because of injury. Oh, Cal Ripken? He was he was your quintessential, like, I'm a slender, like, dad bod type of guy. Cal Ripken. <laughs> Cal Ripken, fella. with his shirt off at the beach, would have turned no ladies' heads. He was a regular guy, like you and I. So, I look at it this way. Nolan Ryan. They said by today's metrics, I don't know if you've seen this recently, where the radar guns were different. Like, Nolan mm. Ryan threw 106 to 108. Like when you do that, when when they use today's technology and somehow apply it, Nolan Ryan looked like your strong uncle. Like he was just like Southern Texas strong. Like Nolan Ryan wasn't doing uh, curls ranger. for the girls. He wasn't doing uh, shoulder presses. He was just strong. Yeah, that dad strength. And I remember our buddy Colin Cowherd right here on Fox Sports. Did he not go on a little rant about how at the combine 
he thought it was a bad look that Will Levis was shown off the arms. Like he's like, yo, put on some sleeves. Like the idea of Will Levis being like, yo, I'm a strong, studly quarterback. Put away the muscles. It's, yeah. it's, Tom Brady didn't need all that. Tom Brady looked Maybe like that uh, was the secret to success. <laughs> Tom he Brady never really is, had that that muscle packed on that would cause any injury. Tom Brady and Ichiro. Two guys that were all about stretching and mobility. You and ever see Ichiro in his like routine? He was so disciplined with that. Like every time they showed him in the dugout, the dude was flexing, stretching, stretching flex, yeah. doing. All, I mean, he had a routine, and he was like so on top. Of dude, it. you can you can make fun of him all you want, but there is you gotta say there's something to be said about the TB12 routine. It, it's not by accident that this guy was just always sort of conditioned. One big injury, right? One one leg injury. He probably accidental. watched. He probably watched some good body VHS that I was talking about. <laughs> I, you know what? <laughs> You're probably the commonality when they yeah. interviewed Ichiro and Tom Brady. Both said they were huge, slim, good body. It's got to be That's way back on Wednesday. Slim, good body. So 